My fellow Republicans, I accept your nomination with a deep sense of humility. The 1964 public convention is one of the great historic political events of the 20th century. There was a, a battle going on for the, the soul of the Republican Party between these emerging conservatives like Goldwater and the party's moderates, the Romneys, the Rockefellers. Generally, when there's that kind of divisive primary battle, you want to try to find a way to mend fences. Go to the opposite approach. He basically blew the fence up. He basically cut the wound deeper. Republicans agree heartily to disagree on many, many of their applications. But this Republican Party is a party for free men, not for blind followers, and not for conformists. He was saying to the moderates in the room, we don't want you. I can't think of any politician ever who's done that. The good Lord raised this mighty republic to flourish as the land of the free, not to stagnate in the swampland of collectivism, not to cringe before the bullying of communism. Goldwater is mad, and he's not afraid to let everybody know it. It was the epitome of articulating clear positions that so many politicians shy away from now. It is a delusion that a world of conflict will somehow mysteriously resolve itself into a world of harmony if we just don't rock the boat or irritate the forces of aggression. And this is Hogwarts. Goldwater's convention speech is known today for one line, the line about extremism. Goldwater's advisors said, you cannot say this. Goldwater ultimately settled the argument. This, he said, is my favorite line in the speech. So when he delivers it, he delivers it with particular relish. I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice, that moderation in the pursuit of justice is no virtue. That line is the most important line because it encapsulates the uncompromising nature of the conservative wing of the GOP. And it gets a huge reaction in the hall, big standing ovation. But a lot of the political leaders of the Republican Party are very unhappy about this. If you look at Nixon's reaction, he's smiling, but he's not applauding. I think it was a great speech. It was tough talk a few decades before tough talk really became popular. And maybe that's why there's no President Goldwater. Goldwater lost in one of the biggest landslides in American history. He really ticked off a great many moderate Republicans who said, well, if you don't want me in your party, I'm not going to vote for you. And a lot of them didn't. Even though he didn't win, the influence of the speech was felt later. His strategy was give Americans a clear choice. President Bush was a big admirer of Goldwater. He adopted that strategy and it ended up working. It's become clearer that in fact it was Goldwater and it was this set of ideas that actually captured the soul of the Republican Party and define it to this day. And you and I are going to fight for the goodness of our land. Thank you.